Well, good morning. I am sorry. I am three minutes late. I had to cook a turkey and it was hotter than I thought to take it apart. So, and I have to go to work straight from here, as y'all know. So, I had to get that done. I am so sorry. But praise God, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We serve an awesome, wonderful, merciful God. His timing is perfect. We sometimes may goof up, but He's a God full of mercy and grace. We'll hear the word just as He wants us to. You've tuned in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We are here to encourage you in the word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. That is where true victory is found. Uh, it's his magnificent, his greatness, his love, his mercy. If we just grasp a hold of a little bit of it, how much better our days would be. This morning's thought was, the wise still seek him. The wise still seek the Lord. You know what, and I'm going to just read the scriptures from my page. Philippians 3, 7 through 14 says this, But what things were, this is Paul speaking. You know, remember Paul was of good reputation. He followed the law. He knew the law. He studied under the wise teacher. Kelly, he, he was someone who in everybody's eyes would have been just right. And when he was having Christians killed, he thought he was doing the work of God until Jesus revealed to him who he was. And then that caused a change of heart. And he began to seek Jesus. And this is what it says. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted as lost for Christ. Everything he had before to him, he didn't care. Eh, that he could lose that, it's okay. His goal was to gain Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, because that's what he depended on before. Now he's not dependent on that anymore, that I may, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Being conformed to his death, he was willing to die for Christ to be conformed to the death, put everything aside that he might gain Christ. It says, if by any means I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Because he now understood, he grasped at the resurrection from the dead. Oh, that was living life. Everything in this world is temporal, but the life that we have in Christ is eternal, and it's an eternal good life. Not a life that's eternal damnation. It's a life that's eternal wonderful blessings. He says he's going and preparing a place for us that where he goes one day we will be able to go and fellowship with him. It, it is so far beyond our understanding the things that God is preparing for those that love him, that keep his word, that do the things that he has, that care more about pleasing him than pleasing the world. You see, he cared more about us than the pleasures that he had in glory. He was willing for 33 years to put aside all his majesty, all his power all the glory to walk as a man be born as a baby feel all the things that we feel suffer a horrible death knowing that he was going to rise again because he has the power over death and hell he spoke this universe into existence he is the giver of life 
It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. The only way to have the right relationship with the creator of this universe, with God the Father, is through Jesus Christ. And God the Father was willing to send God the Son for us. Willing to send his Holy Spirit after Christ rose. That we may still have God with us. That's the message of Christmas. Is God with us. Emmanuel. You get to have the spirit of the living God living in you. Teaching you, guiding you, giving you strength. Once you give your life to Jesus and you let him be Lord of your life, everything changes. Those things that you once counted precious. Like Paul said, now we're rubbish compared to what he has gained in Christ. Goes on and says, not that I have already attained, we're still working on this, or am I already perfected? But I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold for me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended it, but one thing I do, forgetting those things that which are behind me and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. We are to keep a praise song in our heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I had Proverbs 4. You can read that that I was going to read. Some of Deuteronomy 4, Colossians 3. Maybe tomorrow we'll continue there. Keep that praise song in your heart. Know that God loves you dearly. Christmas is about the greatest gift, and that is Jesus Christ. You don't need anything else. All you need is that sweet relationship with Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m.